We are recording this news broadcast from Nablus, occupied Palestine, on behalf of the Tanweer Palestinian Cultural Enlightenment Forum. The news today is this. Afula Hospital, under the control of the apartheid Israel occupation forces, is where the hunger striking detainee journalist Mohammed Al Kik is being held. The hospital issued on Tuesday a second medical report in less than 24 hours on the rapidly deteriorating health of Al Kik's, according to legal sources. Shawad Bulas, head of the legal unit, of the Palestinian Prisoner Society said that following 70 days of hunger strike against being detained without a charge or trial, al Kik complained about unbearable headache, headaches and a severe pain in the abdomen and feet. Bulas said that the issuance of the second report by Afula doctors in such a short time highlights the rapid pace in which al Kik's health has been rapidly deteriorating. Meanwhile, physicians at the hospital said al Kik still refuses to receive nutritional supplements and to undergo any medical examination. He has lost his ability to speak and hear and may slip into a coma. I should mention that there is a, a further report of breaking news today in Jerusalem at Damascus Gate, where young Palestinians uh, usually congregate and where I actually made a video of a young Palestinian man doing breakdancing, is where also a group of uh, young women uh, soldiers in training from the border police, which are the most vicious of the military units in the uh, Israel, supposed Israel Defense Force, who were training and walking through the area, were attacked by three Palestinian youths who were subsequently executed and uh, three soldiers uh, I think it is three soldiers were attacked one of whom was uh, severely uh, injured and uh, died today in the hospital there so this is a serious uh, operation in which soldiers were attacked soldiers in training youths teenagers being attacked by other teenagers from a different uh, nation. So that is today's news, and it happened in Jerusalem at Damascus Gate, which is uh, usually uh, considered East Jerusalem, but under uh, has been annexed, you know, to the state of Israel. Next news item is the three Palestinian Arabic dailies focused in their Tuesday issue on the fatal shooting of a Palestinian youth by. Israeli soldiers near to Karam on Monday morning. They said that 19-year-old Ahmad Jamal Toba from the village of Kafr Jamal, south of Tukaram, was shot dead by Israeli troops outside Salit Settlement, or colony, eagerly built on the villager's land after he allegedly attempted to stab some soldiers. Meanwhile, the dailies reported on the recent Israeli military closure of Ramallah and Albira cities. Al-Yam and Al-Quds said that Israel forces reopened all roads leading to Ramallah and Al-Bira following strenuous efforts by the Palestinian military liaison office with their Israeli counterparts. The uh, control points to Ramallah, the de facto capital of the uh, Palestine Authority here in the West Bank, was closed down on Monday because on Sunday there was an attack by a member of the uh, Palestine Authority police when he was stopped in order to come out of his vehicle at the entry point to Ramallah. And uh, if usually the uh, Palestine Authority personnel are not, you know, stopped or, and certainly not, you know, ordered to uh, leave their vehicles. So this must have enraged this officer who then opened fire on three uh, Israeli soldiers of the apartheid Israel occupation force. And so uh, the entrance points were shut down. 
to uh, Ramallah uh, for the, uh, the day thereafter. Every day there are operations and events that take place here with uh, people dying on both, on both uh, sides of the equation. Next, we have a report that a 14-year-old Palestinian Tuesday was shot and injured by Israeli troops outside Pasagot, an apartheid Israel-occupied illegal settlement east of Ramallah in the West Bank, according to medical sources. The Ministry of Health said the teenager was shot with a live Israeli bullet in his lower abdomen outside the settlement and was admitted into Palestine Medical Complex for medical surgery. The circumstances behind the shooting have not been revealed yet. The apartheid Israel occupation force Tuesday stormed the house of a Palestinian who was recently shot dead by the army in Hebron, Al Khalil, and took measurements inside in an apparent prelude to demolishing it as a collective punishment against his family, according to security sources. The sources said that at late midnight, the apartheid Israel occupation force broke into the house of Ibrahim Eskafi, who was shot dead by the army on November the 4th, 2015, after he allegedly attempted to run over Israeli soldiers at a checkpoint near Hebron, Al-Khalil. Apartheid Israel occupation force reportedly took measurements inside the house prior to an anticipated demolition. The forces continued, continued punitively to demolish the homes, the family homes of any Palestinians by means of, uh, as a means of deterrence. Any Palestinians accused of being involved in attacks against them, a policy that the apartheid Israel occupation force does not use against Israeli settlers who were involved in fatal attacks against Palestinians. This policy was widely condemned uh, by human rights organizations as, quote, collective punishment and, quote, a war crime and a crime against humanity. Bitslam, an Israeli human rights group under uh, apartheid Israel occupation sovereignty, said, quote, the people who bear the brunt of the demolitions are relatives, including women, the elderly, and children, whom Israel does not suspect of involvement in any offense. In the worst majority of cases, the person whose actions promoted the demolition was not even living in the house at the time of the demolition, the group adds. Amnesty International argued that the Israeli authorities claim that such demolitions are effective in dissuading potential attackers is, quote, entirely irrelevant in the eyes of international humanitarian law, which places uh, clearly on, on the actions which an occupying power may take in the name of security, and the absolute prohibition on collective punishment is one of the most important of these rules. Collective punishment is never permissible under any circumstances. <coughs> Part of Israel occupation force bulldozers early Tuesday demolished two Palestinian houses in the Jerusalem area, citing unlicensed building as a pretext, reported a house demolition watchdog, Wadi Hilwa Information Center, which reported that large numbers of apartheid Israel occupation police forces and municipal staff escorting a bulldozer stormed Sur Bahir, a neighborhood in the southeastern outskirts of East Jerusalem, and cordoned off Wadi Abdul Humus area before proceeding to demolish a 200 square meter house under construction. The center identified the homeowner as Iyad Abu Muhammad. It reported on Muhammad as saying that he had started the construction of the four-room house around seven months ago and had planned to move in on Tuesday with his seven-member family. Muhammad told the center that he had completely finished the house and was supposed to furnish it and move in on Tuesday with his family, including five children between the ages of one and twelve. But Israeli bulldozers demolished it early morning without any prior notice. He added that Israeli police broke down the main front door before proceeding to demolish the house. Press reported on Mohammed as saying that Israel doesn't issue construction permits for Palestinians in Jerusalem as a means to forcefully displace them, prompting them to embark on construction without obtaining construction permits.
In the meantime, Israeli police early Tuesday also demolished another house belonging to Yahya Busin in the East Jerusalem Silwan neighborhood of Wadi Kadum. Wadi Hilwa Information Center reported on Yahweh as saying that he embarked on the construction of his 220 square meter house seven months ago for his eight member family, but it was demolished by part of the Israel Occupation Force bulldozers. Yeah, yeah, told Wafa, the Palestinian news agency, that an Israeli Jerusalem district court was supposed to hold a hearing to examine a petition to stop the planned demolition on Tuesday at 10 a.m. However, police and municipal staff carried out the demolition. He stressed that he had been attempting to obtain a construction license, but to no avail. Israeli authorities had severely curtailed Palestinians' ability to legally construct new houses or expand existing houses, denying them permits since June 1967. According to Beth Slem, the Israeli Information Center for Human Rights in the Occupied Territories under apartheid Israel occupation sovereignty, from 2004 until August 31, 2015, Israel demolished at least 579 Palestinian residential units in the East Jerusalem area alone, causing 2,133 people, including at least 1,158 minors, to lose their homes. UN resident and humanitarian coordinator James Raleigh argued the demolitions violate international law. Demolitions that result in forced evictions and displacement run counter to Israel's obligations under international law and create unnecessary suffering and tension, he says. They must stop immediately. <clears throat> I'm going to verify the technical status. of this transmission at this point, and everything seems to be okay. Next report. The Palestinian Prisoner Society Tuesday revealed test <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, it's getting cold, presented by two detainees about being subjected to brutal torture. Uh, just a moment, I'm going to take a break and uh, put the heat on, which is uh, basically a propane tank attached to a diffusion mechanism. That's the only heat in the houses here, unless you have an electric plug-in heater, which I don't. I'll be right back.